Yeah, we are now panelists. It works. Okay, and can you now stop broadcasting and see if we're still there? Nicola? Okay. Hey. Hello, hey. can you? Can you now stop broadcasting and see if we are still there as panelists, since we're panelists now? Mm. I can only end meeting for all. So there's no way to, um, to prepare with panelists before you actually broadcast. Mm. They would need to log in as panelists. Yeah, but we are now, so.
Okay, well, then let's just hope that it, uh, it works straight away. Uh, the only thing is, did you see the emails and chats about Facebook? Uh, yes. Okay, so it's connected now. The ECF Facebook account is now connected to yours, so you should be able to broadcast this live. To mine? Yes, to yours. So not, you didn't see the emails. Not chat. to Cultural Lab Europe. No, to the ECF Facebook account is connected to yours, so you can, with your own login, uh, broadcast this on ECF Facebook page. But I'm logged in on Cultural Lab Europe account now. I'm talking about Facebook. Mm -hmm. How are you, yeah. Manuel? I'm good. You How look you? good. Yeah. It's uh Don't be stressed, it's gonna be fine. Oh, but Felipe is there. Yeah, so there are six attendees here, so maybe you should uh Okay, we will speak on the phone, right? I will I will start sharing my screen and switch off my mic and then we can speak on the phone.
Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, I hope you can hear me. So I would like to welcome everybody, especially the participants, for the first day of the Cultural Lab Europe Spaces for Solidarity. My name is Maria Katalinic, and I'm a project manager from the ECA 2020 European Capital of Culture, one of the partners of the Cultural Lab Europe. So as we start, I'd like to introduce Andrea Wilkins, director of the European Cultural Foundation, who is going to give words of welcome, after who we will be able to hear a short presentation by Menno Weiss, lab's project manager. I would like to remind everyone that the session will be recorded, but except the panelists, you will not be visible. If you have anything against that, please shut off your camera, but as I said, you will not be visible. Just a short reminder that after following Menno's presentation, we will arrive to the speaker, Krzysztof Czyżewski, from the Polish organization Borderland and his keynote speech, Solidarity, a Culture of Rebellion. So now I'd like to give the words to Andrea Wilkins. Thank you very much. Okay. Hello? Hello, hi, Andre. Hi, oh, uh, hello and welcome. That was just in time. I had uh, trouble joining in. I forgot my password and whatever, but I'm, I'm very glad that I'm here and, and welcome to everyone. Um, when um, Mano and um, our team at the European Cultural Foundation planned this event and this project uh, last year, um, with the title Spaces for Solidarity, we thought it was, it was an important event, it was an important title, and it was, um, and it, we, we did it together with, with very good uh, and important partners, but we didn't quite um, know how important and relevant and urgent um, this event and this title would be. And uh, it was also the, the first event um where we had to think um can we actually do it because we were sitting together at the end of of february after we had our first discussions with colleagues in italy and milano and torino and cuneo and uh, we said well, can we actually do that event and we held out as long as as possible because we said maybe it's um that it passes over and maybe it's not that bad and um, maybe we find a way but then we, we had to cancel the physical event and for us it became in a way a test case of um, um, how to deal with the, with the current uh, crisis um, because we didn't only um, um, cancel the event and moved it online, so we didn't cancel it, we just moved to, to another space, the digital space for the moment. Um, but we reviewed in the process our whole work plan for this year because we thought, and many of you um, have done the same, we thought this is, is bigger than, than just a passing period. And in that context, um, we actually focused our whole work plan for this year on the topic of uh, promoting a culture of solidarity. So that's why when I said at the beginning how important the title and this event was, it became even more apparent for us in the process of, of um, dealing with, um, with, with the challenges of having this project and this event at all. So, um, we changed our our work plan. We um, uh, our, we we aligned all our um, activities this year, and who knows, um, and maybe also next year to the theme of the culture uh, of solidarity. We created the culture of solidarity fund um, our, as our biggest activity um, this year, and um, and that has been the focus. Um, of what we are doing very much and the title of um, what is actually solidarity today in Europe um, is uh, something which has been very much on our mind and the mind of our partners in this project and many other uh, projects. Um, and um, I'm very glad that we are, we are having this event now um, online. 
I hope uh, we will meet again um, in another setting. Uh, we always imagined this to be, of course, in Rijeka, um, um, nice weather, um, maybe having things outside and at the end um, of the day, having um, a, a nice uh, get together with maybe a glass of wine. Um, that is not um, happening or maybe um, we have all glasses of wine separately in our various locations. So um, maybe let's do that at the end of the day. But um, but uh, it, uh, we, we do it anyway. We, we are resilient in that sense. We use a digital means to the best um, um, of, of what of, of you know what they can do and um, and I'm looking forward to a, to a great um, lab and I know that uh, the colleagues involved um, from um, the, the city of Yeka of course um, from um, from of course um, the team at the European Cultural Foundation um, but also from Zemo S um, 98 from Klitita, Klitika Politichna um, and um, who have all worked together to, to make that happen and um, I thank them all already and look forward to a to great discussion. Menno will explain more um, what it's all about and I'm looking forward to a great keynote. So thank you and um, all the best and as I said, uh, let's meet Analog again. Thank you very much, Andre. I really also hope we meet in Rijeka by the beach. We have, you know, the sea is nice until October. So let's <laughs> see how things will be happening. Uh, and thank you so much for this like heartwarming uh, opening, uh, short introduction, really. Um, and so, as you said, Menno Weiss, the project manager for the lab, will be now uh, taking the stage, so to say, and give you a short presentation of what, what's coming. So, Menno, whenever you're ready. Thank you again, Andre. Hello, everybody. I hope you can hear and see me. Welcome, everyone, to Culture Lab Europe, Spaces for Solidarity. Uh, Culture Lab Europe is part of the project uh, Culture for Solidarity, a two and a half year artistic investigation into root causes of fragmentation. And uh, in Europe, by Kritika Politichna, same as 98, and the European Culture Foundation. The aim is to contribute to more solidarity by highlighting practices that bring unusual groups of people together, connecting these practices and scaling them across the continent. Culture for Solidarity is a co is co-funded by the Creative Europe program of the European Commission. When an artist, museum or a director stops making work for an audience, but instead works with, with citizens as participants, the line between activities that are clearly artistic and those that are clearly social is fading. New spaces are created where working together and creating new forms of meaning are what matters, rather than the opinion of just one artist. In these spaces, culture functions as a language to describe reality, to express feelings and opinions, and to imagine ways of living together. Culture strengthens social ties within communities and beyond and start new debates within our societies. The project started uh, two years ago with an participatory action research in five cities in Europe. In Marseille, we investigated the social tissue and race solidarities among the residents of the Bel Horizon flat building. In Kisenau, we mapped the collective memory of the neighborhood Chiocara. In, in Poland, we conducted interviews with residents of Polish and newly displaced as a consequence of the Second World War. In Zagreb, we had a closer look at the dynamics of the participatory cultural center, Pogon. And in Seville, the staff of Samos 98 reflected on their role in the community and how their own precarious situation is preventing them to fulfill that role as good as they would want to. In April 2019, actors involved in those cases that I just described came together in Sevilla 
uh, which representatives of cultural institutions, journalists, and policy makers. Big topics for Europe, such as memory and identity, work, housing, and public space, which resulted in a and disseminate debate in the run-up to the European elections. And now, a bit later, and in a different way than planned, it's time for Culture Lab Europe. All across Europe, citizens, including the ones who are not recognized as such formally, are realizing they're not alone, and they are organizing their communities. They are creating new online and offline spaces where working together and generating solidarity is what matters. Connecting these spaces will provide a crucial infrastructure for a cultural movement that can reclaim European democracy. After an open call launched in January, we selected in February 50 cultural change makers who are engaged in local practices, fostering solidarity and providing space for public debate. They will now have the opportunity to be inspired by each other and each other's uh, initiative tackling the pressures facing European societies, build connections with other cultural change makers across Europe, develop initiatives contributing to a European space for public debate, fostering solidarity amongst people living across our continents, and also to meet funders as part of their initiative for European public space and to get the initiatives they are working on also funded so they can be implemented. The key principles uh, we are working with are peer-to-peer -peer knowledge, collective intelligence, and open source philosophy. Now, how does that work, working together? Uh, uh, the, the public face of, uh, of the project, we kicked this off on the 9th of May, the day of Europe, and participants working on this together. And you can follow the blog and also, for example, download the research and watch the outcomes of the research on cultureforsolidarity.eu slash lab. We are working in uh, Miro, the, uh, the online digital whiteboard sharing platform. And we built there something called Clay City. On the 22nd of May, the 5th of June, and also last Friday, we had already three video calls in which participants were preparing and uh, shaping the groups they wanted to work. This is Miro. It's a digit where we work in. It has a library, a karaoke bar, a kitchen, and many neighborhoods that still need to be developed. These are the spaces where participants work collectively on their initiatives, fostering solidarity and strengthening European public space. This is an example of one frame in Miro, one, let's say, whiteboard participants were working on collectively, and this is from the group Ecology of Care. But we also have public events open to anyone interested, so please share those uh, events to anyone that you know that might want to watch. On Friday, we have the presentations of the participants' initiatives they have been working on for the whole week. You can watch and ask questions. Tomorrow, around the same time as today, we have Natalie Nubaret, who will speak about why we need your new European media. And in a minute or so, Krzysztof Krzyzewski will speak about solidarity as a new culture of rebellion. And after that speech, and after this week of activities, we hope to get some more insights on this pressing question. How can culture put Europe back together? Please use the hashtag Spaces for Solidarity uh, when you communicate about this event on social media. Let us know what you think. There's time for a Q&A. Uh, Culture for Solidarity is a project by the European Culture Foundation with partners Kritika Politichna and Zemus 98 and Rijeka 2020, European Capital of Culture, co-funded by the Creative Europe Programme of the European Commission. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mena, for this presentation. Uh, I hope this, uh, you know, gave answers to people, participants who are maybe wondering about things that are going to be happening this uh, this week. Um, so I'd like to now give, uh, you know, the spotlight to our first keynote speaker, uh, Krzysztof Czerzewski. 
uh, as I said, from the Polish organization Borderline and with his keynote speech titled Solidarity, a Culture of Rebellion. Just a little introduction, well, not introduction, but just so you know, there's two ways you can pose questions if you wanna pose questions that we will address uh, later on. So, um, you know, you can write them, you know, in the chat or, uh, and then I'll read it later to Krzysztof. Uh, or you can, you know, raise, so to say, a digital hand and our uh, colleague Nicola will then, you know, help me help you pose these questions. So, Krzysztof, the floor is all yours. I'm going to turn off my camera. So, as I said, the spotlight is completely on you. If you need anything, we're right here listening to you. Thank you very much. Maybe you can just unmute. Sorry. Oh, great. Press it. Thank you very much, Maria, Andrew, and Nena. Um, I'm very happy to be with you with a culture of Europe on the topic of solidarity, which for my practice uh, is the major uh, theme for all my life, how to cope with this challenge of solidarity in, uh, in contemporary world. So I will speak not necessarily uh, in the direct context of the crisis we face today with solidarity, thinking about environmental crisis and pandemic. Uh, this is a situation when we really start to think how solidarity is important and the problems we have with uh, uh, lack of solidarity today. But uh, I was engaged in thinking and practicing uh, of cultural solidarity years ago. And uh, so I will um, start to, um, uh, to talk how I understand solidarity and why it matters, and especially um, versus culture um, uh, today. But at the same time, I will uh, try uh, to give some mm, uh, new lines of understanding how we can follow this challenge uh, today in daily practices, in something what uh, we call culture of solidarity. So my uh, perspective, I would like to uh, to depart from for this conversation is uh, solidarity at the core, at the heart uh, of the whole discourse, the whole narrative, which is a, 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 by itself a small rebellion. Uh, it's because it's changing perspective to put solidarity at the very center of what we think about culture. Um, uh, today, and uh, I'm following uh, the way uh, of the author of the book, authors of the book published by, uh, by you, um, uh, Dorota Ogrodzka and Igor Stokhyszewski about culture and solidarity. They took this perspective um, from soli solidarity to culture and to other dimensions of our life. So the first thing I, uh, I want to underline is that it matters that we will uh, position solidarity at the very center of our thinking and, and activities. There is a famous verse by Czesław Miłosz from his moral treaty, uh, important at the point from which you are looking to, uh, to the world and uh, changing this point of view matters. So, and from that point, from the solidarity point, uh, I will speak about how it relates to the culture, to the artistic activities um, and uh, so on. I decided not to read anything, I didn't prepare a paper, I will not even uh, lean on notes uh, and not use visual attributes. I decided to have with you 
a kind of thinking meditation about these new ideas and challenges. So rather join to your open source philosophy uh, as an introduction, although I will end up with some concrete propositions about uh, possible institutions or um, uh, um, new ideas concerning building a concrete organization frameworks because um, this is also, I think, how the idea of solidarity can influence our cultural life, not, not only with ideas, not only with um, uh, daily pre uh, uh, practices, but also how we see about the institution, cultural institution, and cultural education uh, in general. So starting, uh, why, why was solidarity at the very core of my work since so many years, already 30 now? Of course, I'm a child of solidarity movement in Poland and Central Eastern Europe. Uh, and the question in 1989 for us, uh, artists, uh, cultural practitioners, were how to put into the practice the ideas of solidarity movement. Uh, which we all were engaged in. Uh, in. And uh, uh, you see, at that time, um, in the solidarity was understood on the line with uh, gaining freedom and gaining independence. So as a struggle with the regime, the communist regime and struggle for democracy. Uh, so we needed solidarity and gain freedom. So solidarity was something like an instrument, like a mobilization uh, for gaining something more important and crucial for us at, the time, at that time, which was national independence and uh, sovereignty and uh, new democratic Poland. So we deal with solidarity in that pattern of independence and freedom. And, uh, and because of that, we paid the price of uh, uh, losing solidarity after 1989 in social, in interhuman relationships. Uh, that was suddenly a completely new situation, which we didn't know from our historical experience. We already uh, you know, mobilize ourselves as a community uh, to, to fight for freedom. Uh, and it was the fight of many generations, not, uh, not the communist time, but before the war in the 19th century. It was a fight of Poland, of many other Central Eastern European countries. You know, the freedom was at the very core, and the, the way how we understood culture was very much along this dream of uh, freedom, independence, and sovereignty. But we didn't have the experience of being free and thinking about solidarity or um, concentrating on solidarity, which is. Uh, more social, more interhuman, more on the daily level between um, people and communities. And that, that was that challenge, you know, which we invented this word borderland for our foundation and center, which is uh, like Maria at the beginning. It was uh, very typical and common, you know, mis, uh, misuse of this term, Maria as a borderline foundation. And very often the word pogranicza is translated as a borderline, but it is not borderline, it is the borderland. Uh, which, uh, which says something about the difference between two of them. Borderland is something really to uh, differ one from another, you know, to, to design the border between the uh, differences and, and so on. The borderland is, and, uh, is, in, is the word uh, in the way of the same meaning as solidarity. So it was our word for solidarity in this new situation of the land, which means living together with different people on the same land, in the same community. So borders are rather inside 
and the community, there are, there are real, there are real differences, uh, uh, but you live together. And uh, that's very much about the, the borderland. So you are, um, the life makes you uh, the bridge builder uh, in a very natural way because otherwise the, the life is uh, unbearable. Uh, the bridge is not, uh, not to eliminate borders, but rather to connect, to uh, um, uh, bridge um, uh, and to build something in common, what you may say, uh, call connective tissue. Uh, among us. Uh, so Pogranice, the borderland, was as a solidarity world. And it was uh, in the historical cultural context of this part of Europe, it was used um, as a replacement of the word press edges, which, which was very much uh, about uh, territories which once belonged to the uh, Polish Republic, uh, but today belongs to Belarus, Ukraine, Lithuania. Uh, our eastern neighbors. So the crisis was the word, uh, the world to be connected with our Polish culture, ancestors living in that territories. Uh, but this term crisis was uh, hard to accept for our neighbors because for them uh, it meant uh, the domination of Polish state, of Polish culture, of Polish language assimilation of our languages to the, to the uh, most powerful one at, at that time, and so on. So to say I'm the borderlander uh, was to say I'm engaging in rebuilding all these bridges and rebuilding uh, the connections between different people after many conflicts, traumatic memories, uh, clashes, uh, and, uh, and so on. So, uh, but uh, this is our Central European context for, uh, for the much broader, which I now want to invent to, uh, and to put our discussion, which is uh, saying, that our life on Earth has different periods and epochs, and now we are on the threshold. We humankind, we people doing culture, on the threshold of a new paradigm of cultural civilization, which is like a shift between I, or from I, from the first person singular to you the second person singular and, uh, and it was before the, 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 the period the, the, the third person singular, uh, singular it was dominant ancient Greece and the civilization was domination of something that is beyond our uh, knowledge and the other which is an objective truth and, and uh, um, the spiritual uh, energy uh, and so on. But um, after that, there became this period of I as dominant in our philosophy, uh, in culture, uh, and so on. The Cartesian I, ego, which uh, builds from its from itself the uh, space of the dominance of I, my freedom, my uh, free individual expression, my independence, my sovereign national state, national identity, and some other uh, sharp uh, identities which we created along. Uh, this uh, and uh, on that pattern, on that paradigm, the modernity was developed, and culture was very much involved in that. Uh, 
now. And this is a feeling, an understanding of, for example, philosophers of Denmark, like um, Martin Huber, which were both, uh, or Emmanuel Levinas, uh, or uh, Polish um, philosopher and priest, Josef Tischner, to understand that, that today we face um, a, a new uh, epoch. A, a new uh, culture and paradigm of culture, which will more and more be focused uh, on you as a dominant for our life. And of course, it will be not happen happening overnight. Uh, it will take centuries, probably. Uh, this is a process, but I, when, uh, when I started to be engaged in Borderland, there are so many signs uh, at that moment that we are on that direction, heading on that direction with ecology, um, uh, with uh, thinking about solidarity, with thinking about new type of culture, which will more for social change, social engagement, um, and so on. It demands from us, you know, to, to think, you know, is, uh, not to be focused on my personal freedom as an artist, which was in the previous time, you know, under communist regime, was my virtue, you know, to be free as thinker, as artist, uh, with my expression and with my. Uh, life in the country. But when only we established the center in 1990, in a small town, we started to thinking rather about interdependence, about how to be involved uh, in the community life and how to have culture as a, a connective tissue for in the community building. Um, and it changed our workshop, our laboratory of culture. Uh, you needed new tools, new ideas, new philosophy for that. So this is uh, the point of departure, uh, how I understand um, solidarity. So, of course, all these, what we face today in, the, in terms of crisis, um, uh, of pandemic, of environment, and so on, matters. But there is something, so, uh, but my, my way of thinking about solidarity is not this negative, you know, to react on the crisis. It's something very positive in that, uh, at the background, that we heading on, on this line from I to you, and this is the natural development of our human, humankind uh, way. And probably, you know, through you, we, uh, we will come back to it, to, uh, to the objective reality, and probably we will come back to ourselves, to I. But we need this adventure, this risk uh, of empathy, responsibility for the whole, you know, sacrificing our uh, individual freedoms uh, in, in the purpose of common, and in the, uh, uh, in the purpose of responsibility uh, for the whole, not only for our milieu, for our interests, for our identity, and, uh, and, uh, and so on. So that's the point of departure. And how you think about that, how I understand solidarity is, uh, uh, because you know that there is a that side of solidarity too, you know, it's, it could be, you know, very much about solidarity with my people, which we also face today. And, and when you have this crisis of, of uh, relationships uh, between communities, peoples and so on, you know, more and more than because of fear, because of, uh, of the outside pressure to care, about my people and to understand solidarity in the narrow terms. But uh, of course, I'm sure this is not the way uh, we, uh, we are going to understand solidarity. It's, it's very much for me close to this Indian term, ahimsa, uh, 
which uh, the virtue of nonviolence uh, transforms into action practice of uh, compassion and solidarity with every living being on the earth, including plants, stones, and any uh, epiphany of living, uh, of living beings. Uh, so there is no other solidarity, in fact, than solidarity with everybody. So, think about solidarity as hospitality. Uh, there are no limits for hospitality. If you think about the virtue at your home of hospitality, you don't, you don't keep anything for yourself in the refrigerator. You are offering everything. And you don't think about the particular kinds of host you will have and you will be hospitable to. If there is a hospitality, in truth, it is for everybody. And of course, there are life limitations and obstacles and aporias in our lives that you should, we should give up our hospitality because it's beyond our uh, capacities. And uh, I know such situations in life. But then stop talking about hospitality. Let's talk about some projects, you know, some pragmatic uh, uh, resolutions for, for the problems. But when we are starting to think about hospitality, don't keep anything for yourself in the refrigeration. This is also about solidarity. So it is kind ahimsa in that terms of trying to embrace every body, every life being. And of course, you may say it is beyond our possibilities. It's something, you know, demanding too much. It's not uh, of the human's capacity. Uh, but I would say, uh, you know, I like very much uh, once what the Polish intellectual and sociologist Peter Oshetinsky said. Uh, I'm, I'm a feminist because my dream is of the world of uh, uh, truly equal people. So I'm becoming a feminist. Becoming a feminist means, uh, means that I, I cross my border of gender, of culture, of something toward other banks. So sometimes in my life, I, I was pushed, you know, it was very natural to say I'm Jewish. Although my origin is not Jewish, and probably Orthodox ra a rabbi will, you know, argue with me, yeah, uh, saying, you know, I have nothing to do with Jewishness. But when I was, you know, pushed by the situation of some anti-Semitic reaction and, uh, and so on, I, I, I tended to say, I'm with you. I'm a Jew too, like Tsitaeva said once about poets, you know, we are all Jews. So the solidarity in that terms me means very much that you cross your bank of your identity, of your belongings, uh, of your home threshold, and so on. And this is you know, not, starting not from the end of this absolute, you know, for everybody, but starting from crossing your limitations toward a concrete people. You are living or coexist with them and you are empathic. Means you are crossing your, yourself something. So uh, solidarity for me, is the borders. And it's very much about the art of building bridge, uh, which never happens when you feel your, that you yourself are on the right bank and all other people should join you. Uh, that's not the way you build a bridge. Yeah. But uh, I believe that very often we do this mistake 
in our liberal democracies, uh, we have these feelings that we have value, and we are on the right bank of the river. And um, other people think it's only a question of time when they will join us. We should educate them, we, we should, you know, do many things that they will cross the river and build a bridge in towards us. That's not the solidarity way of building the bridge. You should, from your side, cross your hand as well. Otherwise, there is no opportunity to, uh, to meet me and build a, a bridge. And uh, what I would like also about the solidarity uh, understanding is what Sigmund Bauman once said when we, he was deeply dissatisfied uh, about what uh, happened in Germany. Uh, you know, this uh, anti-austerity movement, which was, uh, you know, festival of solidarity, uh, quickly disappeared. Uh, uh, you know, we were engaged all in the barricades and manifesting solidarity, but, but uh, it uh, uh, had a short uh, life um, afterwards. And in that, from that perspective, he said something uh, like uh, that, do you want solidarity? If so, face and come to grips with the routine of the mundane with its logic and inanity, with the powers of its demands, commands, and prohibitions. I like this word mundane, which is at the same time daily, earthly, but embracing the worldwide view and global perspective or uh, activity. Mundane, so uh, solidarity is very much about dealing with coping with mundane challenges uh, in our life. So referring to what uh, Henrik Schivonos, one of the workers of the guys, the uh, shipyard and, and the leader of Polish solidarity said that there are two types of solidarity. One is great solidarity you know, on the government level and power level and the small solidarity which is focused on daily things, uh, human relations, help, uh, help just, you, you know, excluded people or uh, persecuted the regime and so on. She develops this kind of help. There was a small solidarity in the big solidarity movement. So, uh, versus culture, there's, uh, you know, this dimension of small solidarity is a, another rebe rebellious thing of building cultural solidarity. It, it, it uh, challenges us to, you know, come down uh, to the ground, to the real people, to small things, to daily life, and uh, build uh, this culture of solidarity, uh, solidarity on, that, on that level. So, having this uh, at the core of my thinking about solidarity as culture of rebellion, uh, how I would think about culture versus solidarity, how this view of solidarity influenced the culture, uh, practices, ideas, and and the way you think about uh, it. Uh, culture itself has these problems as solidarity has. So it could be our culture. And, and culture in general has problems with solidarity. Zimbabwean says that it is, uh, the culture has, is not enough hospitable for solidarity. Uh, because we we close culture to the very sometimes very narrow identities connected to nationalities, religions, languages, cultures, and so on. So uh, there is we we even may, may say about intercultural dialogue or some activities we do for. Uh, uh, 
for exchange of cultures and so on. But subconsciously, we understand culture sometimes. I'm sorry for generalizing it now, but we think as a, as a close union which should negotiate with other close uh, units. So Polish culture with Lithuanian or French uh, cultures, and uh, we have all industry, you know, all uh, laboratory machinery of National Institute, you know, propagating uh, national cultures. And we in Europe very often understand culture as a uh, you know, as a uh, dominium of national states. In fact, it is it's a, a dominant perspective uh, to that. This is not the way we should understand culture from the perspective of solidarity. Uh, and it's, it's changing, basing deeply the, uh, the way we understand culture. And very much goes along uh, uh, the philosophy of, uh, of Jan Asman, you know, this Egyptologist uh, who started to, you know, to, uh, do uh, research or pre monotheistic religion in uh, ancient uh, Egypt and started to use this term anti religion to talk the monotheistic religions like Judaism, later on Christianity, and others. Why? Because, uh, uh, because it came with this concept of having our own religious and as an absolute right and different from the others, or having the absolute truth on our side, not the others. And we started to close religion around these boundaries of having right and, and having others outside this milieu of, of religion for the pre-monotheistic religion like uh, ancient Egypt. And there was no type of understanding of religion. It was when you enter the space of religion of sacrum, it means that you leave all, all the boundaries behind you. You, you are entering something in common. And it's not very ancient uh, in terms, you know, of belonging to the ancient civilization. I'm telling you about that because this is my experience of working with people on the borderlands in different continents. I still uh, experience to meet uh, people uh, who understand the religion and culture in general in that terms as a absolute openness. Um, and leaving all the boundaries uh, behind you. When you enter the space of cycle or in general of culture, there is no place for divisions because we are entering you know, towards something that is common. I think we have problems, uh, problems with this way of understanding of culture as something that unites rather than divides. Uh, and uh, thinking about culture from that perspective uh, of solidarity, uh, opening this horizon of understanding culture as um, something very uh, going to, toward unity and and common space of coexistence, of belonging uh, to. So if uh, we think about culture of solidarity like that, what, what we can do or what uh, fields of understanding we can invent to open culture from inside? It's not very much about Open, uh, opening it to the other cultures, which is also important. This you know, cross-cultural dialogue is absolutely important. And I'm not about you know, eliminating all these differences, but to think about culture you know, being open from inside and having different scope 
for naming things as mine, as belonging to me, you know, as, uh, as common. Uh, there's a, um, a very famous, I, I hope you, uh, you know this movie, I hope you probably can see the Cold War. And there is a small episode in the, the beginning of that film when you have a situation of artists, you know, composers who are building a folk ethnographic music group and they start to, uh, to organize expeditions to different traditional regions like uh, uh, Lemko people, which are, you know, the special national minority uh, group in Poland, close to Ukrainian um, one, and they have this polyphonic, beautiful uh, way of singing, which is rare in Poland because we are rather, you know, have a monophony and, uh, in singing, and they are fascinated by these songs and sharing it, you know, traveling in a uh, in a car, and the driver of, the, uh, of that car, uh, named Kachmar, saying, oh, such pretty. It's a pity that it is not ours. And to say not ours, uh, it means to define your identity and who you are very much. We are Polish, but it is, you know, the local people live centuries together uh, with us uh, in Poland and they are Polish citizens. But there is something what tend uh, and push us to say this is not our. And, and this is a simple thing, but I think very crucial for our understanding of culture, because in this culture of solidarity, I think we will face the process of extending the borders of what is ours, from very narrow to brother and brother, and having legitimacy to say our, or some, um, some much bigger uh, scope of culture in general, to feel that it is mine, it is our, it belongs to myself, not to other cultures and other nations um, and, and so on. How it is, you know, this Kachmar, it was in communist Poland and, and um, very naturally he did a, a big career with his concept of what, he, what is ours and not uh, and there was no way to have Lenko songs in a Polish national choir or dance group. You know? because it was not ours. That was a dominant of Kachmari uh, vision, and he became not this artist who, who, who had to emigrate uh, to the Western Europe, but Kachmari became the driver, became the conductor and director of an orchestra. It was in communist regime, but I think we still have this challenge, how we say uh, and use in cultural system what is our or not. So culture of solidarity would, would be very much about extending our understanding and feeling what is truly our, and it costs, it's not easy. For us, we, we do our activities in Saini, in our town, in Northeastern Poland, in former Jewish quarter, among others, a former synagogue. It took us a long way to say about this building, this is our synagogue. How? How it happens? What you should do uh, that it becomes our. And again, you come back, uh, you can't do it without solidarity with the people living there, here, uh, before, with Jewish culture, with Jewish memory, with Jewish tradi uh, tradition, but also Jewish trauma and, uh, and so on. So you you should so to be solid uh, in solidarity with this heritage, you should become uh, self-critical. You know, you you should you should open some dark chapters in your own uh, history and memories of the communities. Uh, so it costs 
is this critical attitude towards remembering our, uh, our own culture. It will not, we will not gain the credibility of saying it is our uh, without uh, the deeply empathic work of what was the fate of our neighbors, of people living uh, with us uh, before. What else uh, in, in context of solidarity versus culture? Uh, there is this prefix I like very much called uh, co creative cooperation, co production, co authorship. I think to open culture or culture of solidarity, this prefix is of a big importance for us. So even I tend sometimes to, to say, fuck you, see all to attribute the prefix call in many of your activities and way of thinking. And from one side, it is a good strategy, you know, for creating some uh, he, he, good things, artistic, uh, education, and so on. You need cooperation. You know, you need uh, people who will work with you. But it, when you go deeply into this call, uh, it, it becomes, you know, like a very good meditation practice, which somehow uh, is, is able to free. Uh, you from yourself and from different limitations you, you can have. So it is not only a pragmatic, uh, you know, or e even philosophical concept that we, we should do co-creation uh, or co-production in culture, but it means also co-authorship, co-philosophy, co-truth, co-self. What does it mean that maybe myself, my truth, maybe it's not fully an absolute. So there is no real truth without God, without you, without second person singular. Maybe this is very much about the truth of ourselves that to gain or to be on the way to a real truth. It is a way of being together with somebody. And because otherwise, there will be no way to be fully ourselves. So it's something more than just this idea of production that it makes you think differently about who you are, in fact, and what truth is, and what freedom is. And now, because we understood it very often in a very individual way, my freedom, yeah? the freedom of individual expression, and so on, there is a way of understanding freedom, like Hans Gadamer, the philosopher, did, saying that I have as much freedom as my neighbor has. What it means that gaining freedom means that I extend the space of freedom of my neighbors, of people I'm co uh, I coexist with. So, there is a co-freedom. There is no way to, to go far with achieving the freedom than together with other people. And it may be, you know, in, uh, in contrary to, to the way of, you know, believing that 
no, no, I won't be by myself. You know, this is my freedom. When I was you know, engaging in alternative culture, counterculture in the 70s, that was the way how we understood the freedom. And didn't think about, you know, going to the communities and to the people to live together with them. We were thinking about building a community, you know, outside, an alternative, outside of the world, you know, because only there your dream could be fulfilled when you abandon the people, when you abandon your social environment context and so on. This is your freedom. My lesson after 1989 is that there, there's and uh, there's a different way to bring freedom uh, when you go to the people and you think about your freedom as co-freedom, as something what you can bring together with the others. Maria, you, I see you. I'm, I'm enjoying your, your talk. I'm just, uh, you know, kind of wanted to show up and say that, you know, in a couple of minutes, if we can uh, just uh, let you rest for 10 minutes, that would be perfect. But feel free to take your time. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm, I'm, thank you for reminding me. I'm very close to, uh, to the end, which I want to uh, enrich with only two words. One is deep. Uh, I, I will not talk, I have this concept of deep culture. I will not talk about that. But why I use this word deep, which sometimes means controversial for my friends when I invented it, you know, when Boca Cultura in Polish. It's too grand, the word, you don't like it. Uh, and especially when you think about solidarity, you know, to be and working with the people deep is something maybe not to the people. Maybe it's too ambitious. It's maybe for only artistic circles, avant-garde circles and so on. What it means, in fact, in terms of solidarity, is that you don't trust people you work with, that the deep attitude to the world could be for them and together uh, with them. I think it's another apolia we have. Don't touch this, don't go too deeply because it will be not for the people. So the culture of solidarity is a, a very much about trusting the people that we can go deep together. And in fact, there is no solidarity without profound attitude to that and go, go, uh, go deeply to that. As, and it, it takes me to the last word that I want to, uh, to recall, which is beauty. Because when we talk about cultural solidarity, we think about a lot about, you know, social engagement, doing people and, and even, you know, sacrificing our artistic individual ambitions for doing something together. But there is no real bridge without beauty. That this is this capacity of of creating beautiful things, belonging to artists, is crucial for culture of solidarity. There is no culture of solidarity without beauty. And this craft of, of creating beautiful things in all dimensions of our, our life, we shouldn't give up anymore. Of course, I would say that uh, for me, more and more, it, it means, you know, at the beginning of my artistic life, it was, you know, my beauty, my dreams, uh, and my capacity of, of my talent, you know, of doing beautiful things. More and more, in time, uh, I'm thinking about making this happen with other people, and digging up from other, from the community, from every person, and coming to Athens, from every person, the capacity of doing beautiful things together uh, with there. So as, a, as, a, as an activist of culture for solidarity, I don't have this, uh, you know, this comfort as an orchestra conductor in terms of, I can say to you, Maria, you know, you are a very good person, but you, you are not a musical one. You don't, you don't have these skills in music, so you can't be part of my orchestra because it's professional. You know, I care about the level, quality, uh, and so on. Uh, as an 
artist of culture of solidarity, I don't have this comfort to say to anybody, you are not having capacities to do that. Because, and that's your responsibility, you know, uh, the challenge that you should uh, have and open this space for everybody to be cre creative in beautiful things. And I, uh, at the end, you know, I started after, you know, keeping all this in mind, uh, all these small but rebellious things, changing our way of thinking um, and practicing the culture. The question for me is, you know, how to, or, you know, put it into the organ organizational level, you know, and, and I very much believe that we should think about institutions of culture of solidarity, that, that this is a challenge of the future for us, uh, that we should create new type of, uh, of institution, cultural institution. I have this term, you know, small center of, center of, of the world. Um, that we should focus, you know, to, to really establish a solidarity culture. We should think about polyphony of small centers of the world. And when you take acronym from that uh, small center of the world, uh, S-C-O-W, you have the word skull, which is, you know, these small balls when you have a, a sheep who heavy, uh, to maneuver uh, and to reach the bank, you send a, a scows, a small boats, uh, light, uh, movable, uh, attentive to new circumstances you are living. Something like that, we, um, I think we need in our cultural field that opens not for new projects, not for new institutions, which will be small, uh, uh, rooted uh, in, in concrete communities, movable, you know, attentive to the changes and to the challenges, to the situation, not having not white, white elephant, you know, big and, uh, and having problems with maneuvering, but created on a completely new pattern as an institution, you know, employing people. Giving, giving them the security, giving them the chance to work on a long direct, on a long term. Because this is another, uh, I didn't mention it, but the time frame, time dimension is crucial for the culture of solidarity. You can't do it on short, short term. You need continuously uh, pro a continuation process of the work over, over the years. So for that, we, we need institutions. You know, we, 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 we are thinking about small solidarity, uh, about the mundane daily things, but think at the same time, because of that, about the institutions, about having, you know, these uh, uh, wise grantees or people we are cooperating to offering us or to convince them that we need support not only for, you know, festivals and cultural events, we need support for, create, uh, for creating new institutions uh, on that field of culture of solidarity, on, on that new paradigm. And the last one thing, if, if you think in that terms, we, knew, we, knew, uh, we need also academies. Yeah? We need uh, schools to teach this path. Uh, we need somehow to feel, and that's, I feel this responsibility too, that I should transform all these ideas into the language of pedag pedagogical practice of a school, of uh, developing uh, the program which will uh, create a new generation of, uh, of activity, activist, artists, of culture, of solidarity. Thank you for your attention. Lisa, thank you so much for this really, you know, I could listen about this and I think also people who are here with us, you know, for great lengths of time. It really is quite unique and, and really wonderful uh, to hear about solidarity, what rebellion means, what does, you know, coming together mean, but maybe more about this in our Q&A.
which will, so we'll give you and everybody 10 minutes break to get some water, coffee, whatever you need to do. And so we meet at uh, 12, 20, 21, uh, back uh, for a short Q and A with you until one o'clock, if that's okay. And also, I just want to remind everybody that uh, if you have a question, we already are having some coming in. You can write it in a chat, and then I'll read it out to Christoph. Or you can uh, just kind of raise your digital hand, and then you can speak in the microphone. So 12, 21, 22, uh, we uh, come back and then talk more with, you know, with Christoph Drzewski about uh, his keynote speech. Thank you so much once again. I'm going to switch up my camera and see you in 10 minutes.
Great. So we're back for Q&A with Krzysztof Czerzewski, who had a keynote speech right before about uh, solidarity as rebellion actions, which was really fantastic and inspiring. And so I already had questions, but I'm so happy that people are already posing questions. So I will start with who posed first, and then let's see uh, how everything uh, goes. So uh, we have first question from Gwen, who is sending you greetings from London. Uh, and she's well, you know, thanking you for a wonderful talk. Um, and so her question is, and I'm quoting, I wonder if you could speak to the role of dialogue in cultivating a culture of solidarity and building bridges. In my organization, Embrace Dialogue, we try to build a culture of dialogue as part of building peace in Colombia. I would love to hear your thoughts on how dialogue can foster solidarity. So that's the first question for you, Christoph. Thank you, Gwen. And I know your great work in Colombia of building peace with uh, dialogue and culture. Uh, what I can add uh, is, um, of course, we, we need the dialogue for culture and solidarity, but the apoia we face problems very often is that People are living in handouts, and um, and the challenge for us very often is to make them be engaged in dialogue, you know, to give them the space, the capacities, the possibilities to even a, to start the dialogue. Yes, so we need a culture, and you know sometimes uh, in these previous patterns of culture, culture was. You know, with all these individual uh, you know, freedom-oriented uh, work, helping to, to close people in handouts because we are not belonging, we, because we are, you know, having not opportunities to be a part of an artistic milieu and, and so on. To think about the culture as a tool of taking people out of handouts not stigmatizing them in any way of you know, being, for example, xenophobic or anti-Semitic or uh, intolerant or uh, more and more, yeah? But, but having culture is something in, in the process which helps people to come to cross this threshold or withdrawing myself. I am here, I don't have capacities and possibilities and even space. For us, very often the question is, of the, do we have space for dialogue? 
we are, you know, we are closing our um, entities of of our in my town. You know, it's a minority minority circle, different minority circle, and and so on. We live in our world. Yes, so. And, uh, and we can be invited for, for dialogue, but sometimes to create a space for dialogue where everybody can feel at home, freely to speak. Uh, it, is, it is a challenge uh, uh, to have a special space of, the you know, of, of building this tradition of, uh, of dialogue. So, that would be my um, my thoughts on culture of the because otherwise of course there are different types of moderating and making that possible you know and being good moder moderators and facilitators is another kind of art but there is a pre-stage of that situation how make people come in John. Okay, thank you so much, Christoph. Uh, Gwen, if you have any kind of return question, feel free to comment and then, you know, we can continue the discussion. Otherwise, thank you so much for posing your question and Christoph for answering. And so I have one from one of the participants from the, the lab who's asking, uh, it's kind of a comment question. So it's, it says, us and them, is different in a village to us and them is a bit in a big uh, invisible city so he's thanking you mike if you want to maybe elaborate more but i i kind of interpret this question as you know what you were saying the difference between i and we and so if you want to maybe comment on that of course um, there is um, you know the human condition uh, circumstances that we live in different villages yes and we born in certain quarters uh, um, milieus and and so on uh, that all i think is what matters here is to cross to bridge with the other to be hospitable in terms of you know accepting and uh, inviting the others so in the permanent way of navigating between different units and, and borders uh, and so on there is no way i think to annihilate these lines these uh, bridges uh, but you can make out of them, the center, the small center of the world, yes, in my terms, so that you somehow, uh, um, you, uh, through the close contacts with neighborhoods, with people who are, who are around you, you open it up, not escaping to the openness, like the way of cosmopolitan can do, you know, do. It was his co being cosmopolitan for the modern uh, world means, you know, I'm leaving you, I'm going to the center, I'm going to new, having new life, I'm uprooting myself, because this village is, you know, too close, you know, to, to limit myself and my freedom. So I want to live in cosmopolis, you know, with, in open space and so on. I'm escaping from this village. I don't think the way of escape is a solution to, uh, to that. I would say the way is to open up the village because sooner or later we will find out ourselves in, the, in another village and the big met metropolis could be another village as well. And the lib uh, liberal milieu of, of, uh, of you know, people could be a hideout uh, also. Uh, Especially when you tend, you know, to escape beyond, you know, what is close, uh, beyond the neighbors, you know, it's much difficult way to build coexistence with, with people who are very close to you, you know, you easier find yourself uh, in more general European space and so on. I remember, you know, our uh, about Central Europe because we should belong to Europe. So it was much easier for us in Poland, for example, 
to belong to Europe, you know, to go to Brussels, to, uh, to Paris, and to talk then to overcome the village uh, in our region, in our place we are living. So escape, I don't think, because now the effect of it is that the villagers around you are against Europe. Uh, they, they have many fears and, and tend to close even stronger among yourself. So because there was no culture of solidarity in the village, you know, there was somewhere else uh, beyond this milieu, you know, in a big center, in metropolis. But the center should be in your village, you know, in your milieu, and, and that's the way to overcome this we and us. Thank you so much, Christoph, and thank you, Mike, uh, for, for posing these questions. I'm sure we're going to have a whole week in lab also working through this, you know, you know ideas and uh, possibilities. And so I have a question from Andre Wilkins, who we were able to hear at the beginning. Uh, he says, thank you for the inspiring talk. What could be new institutions of, of a culture of solidarity, something you talked about in the end, which are different to existing NGOs, EU, Council of Europe, and etc. I don't have Andrea really answer for that, uh, really concept. It's very much open for me. But what I want to underline is to give the opportunity to think about what Germans, uh, you know it very well, called Bildung. That there is an investment you do in uh, opening the space, the possibilities, the grantings for building new institutions, not projects, not festivals. Uh, having the same money, we, we can do much more for culture of solidarity, thinking about small institutions which employ people, build the team, develop the craft, and, and build small centers uh, of the world. And uh, you, you know, it's, it's uh, when, when you have all these ideas around the culture of solidarity and so on, you will know how new laboratory of culture you should prepare to that. Why well, I'm saying that, uh, about uh, this, because we have now many institutions, and you are right, they are, you, you know, NGOs uh, and so on, but uh, sometimes, and being on that threshold, as my feeling is, is uh, to think about this new development we're all trying to envisage uh, in the future. It shouldn't be based on temporary uh, projects and, and things that we should trust people, giving them capacity grants and opportunities to build institutions for long-term activities. And this is a huge lack in European sphere, especially with NGO movement. And you know it very much, very well, about you know, short-term grantings, leading from project to project. You can do the culture of solidarity in that way. We should overcome this uh, with new philosophy of granting of thinking about you know, supporting culture in terms of institution buildings. Thank you so much, Christoph, for your uh, reply. Chris, whenever you're ready, uh, Chris will be posing a question uh, live to you. He's one of our facilitators in the lab. Chris? Whenever you're ready. Microphone is muted. Yes. Good morning, Christoph. Very nice Good to morning. see you again. Mm -hmm. um, it is just a beautiful experience to, to be able to listen to you, um, as I've done so many times before. Uh, and one thing that struck, struck me in your story is you point out the correspondence between solidarity and, and hospitality. Uh, both of us have been uh, hosts and guests many times in our lives. Uh, and I wonder, um, what do you think, how will hospitality change in these times of Corona when borders are closing, when societies are looking inward, when people have even more reason to uh, 
treat a stranger as a potential threat because they might be carrying the virus? Will this change us as a host and as a guest? Mm. I think, thank you, Chris, uh, for this question. And it comes back to me, to our experience with former Yugoslavia and uh, the risk of being hospitable at that time uh, were when divisions came so deeply profoundly between families uh, of different, you know, national origins or reli uh, religions and so on. And suddenly in a small village, you had a fear against a neighbor or, you know, belonging to different nationality, closed shut doors and, and uh, defending the family uh, as, a, uh, as a power uh, uh, of, you know, survival in a difficult circumstances and, and shut door against the people of other nationalities or religions. And imagine in Poland, uh, people couldn't believe that it can happen, like in Yugoslavia, in Poland. And that was, I remember from that time, people saying, what they are doing in this Balkans? We, it never could happen in Poland. And today, on the shops, we have these boards. Physicians are not allowed to come in. Old people are thrown out from the line to the shop because they are old and dangerous. And it happens in Poland. This, uh, this fear, how it, uh, how it will influence our hospitality, of course, it will take it in the risk and sometimes we'll have to say we give up it's beyond our capacities uh, today but at least we will understand that we we are not enough strong to cope with that that at least you will know that there is a lack of something uh, and in the long term, I think, it deepens our understanding of hospitality. It needs courage, it needs responsibility, especially today, as always. So we should go deeply with understanding uh, of hospitality, but it will work slow and slow after, if you will have culture for that, you know, if there will be possibility to work on that. I don't expect that, that you know, it will happen immediately, that people will understand that we should this or another way be more hospitable today. But at least this feeling that we are, we are not able, you know, that there is, that we are too weak. It's, it's a chance for a strong reaction on, uh, uh, in, in, in the long, long term to be better prepared, you know, to make all necessary changes uh, in your life. So in the long, uh, I think this crisis will, mm, will at least, that's why we today talk about culture of solidarity, I think. Yes, because of course we, we feel that there is a crisis of hospitality and solidarity, but at the same time we are feeling that this is a problem. Yeah, that we can't omit it. That it is a kind of sickness which will poison our life. Uh, and sooner or better, we should find solutions. Uh, and and to think about the culture of solidarity is exactly, you know, to take the responsibility for for all of that and to help us people to have a culture who can help it. You know, who who, who can, uh, of course, it's threatening. You know, you 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 close yourself in your high. You now it's like. Like you remember it from Yugoslavia when you destroy the bridge in Moscow, the first thing after it you you start to think how to rebuild it, because life is unbearable without that. So if we lost hospitality, the next thing will, will be how to rebuild it, how to make it possible again, how to make. Uh, it's uh, it available, you know, uh, for for the people and how to help each other to do it. We'll get there. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chris. Mm -hmm.
Thank you so much, Chris, and thank you so much, Krista, for your answer. Uh, always wonderful to hear, you know, experts and great thinkers talking together. Um, so the next question I have is from Chiara, Chiara Giardi. And so she says, thank you very much for the keynote and the event. My question would be, is there or could there be anything European about solidarity? If so, what would that be? Alternatively, what does European solidarity mean? And isn't, and isn't talking about European solidarity making others borders? Thank you very much uh, for this question, because it's very important for me to think about culture, culture of solidarity in the context of Europe, in the, in the context of integration, in you know, building uh, Europe of culture as, as, as a project. We have these political, economical projects, but we still have problems with, with having Europe as a culture uh, common uh, thing. And uh, the problem itself, I think you feel it, is that we can uh, understand uh, specifically of European culture as the way of doing around it solidarity. And it has its own limitations, uh, of course, and the way in which I understand Europe is, you know, transcending borders, European nests, you know, you cross borders and all, all the time new borders. So I never would see the, the culture close to European borders, you know, limitless from Greece. And this is a civilization which we should somehow defend and define as ours that Europeanness somehow means, and in other civilizations, you know, languages probably have different names for that, you know, to cross, to, you know, extend, uh, not, and of course, we know one way of it, you know, is a colonizing, you know, enriching your power and your imperium uh, to the others, uh, to the other lands uh, and peoples uh, and so on. That was how it happened uh, in the past. When we talk about culture of solidarity, when we talk about you as a call for a new paradigm of culture, this extension would be rather critical, self-critical. It would be rather empathic. It would be rather to cope with colonial heritage, to, to rethink uh, the ways how we understand culture in Europe, how we design sharp borders in, uh, in Europe. Uh, because very much the problems we have is with uh, the modernization and the development of uh, European civilization as well. So we, we inherited all that. So in the concept of culture of solidarity, this critical, self-critical attitude is very much uh, part of, uh, of it. As you've noticed, I, I, would, I didn't speak about demands of culture, people who are other uh, uh, branches of our life, like politicians, economy, and so on. I see this is an inner work we should have done among ourselves, among people of culture, very much critical work about uh, the, uh, uh, the weaknesses or, uh, you, you know, uh, strong uh, patterns we designed in the past. And the challenge for us is to change it from inside. And the same is with Europe. As you ask, I would expect that Europe will do this inner work on the re evaluating the concept of culture, of, um, uh, of solidarity, uh, uh, and so on. Uh, up the field of communication dialogues with the other continents, cultures, um, uh, and so on. So this is not time about the new expansion of our ideas. It's a time of co-feeling, co operating and this call means that the, the, and the part of our work in Europe, there are other 
cultures, other geographical uh, dimensions, uh, and so on, that we should do it in a very in a co-working uh, way. Uh, and that's how I understand, you know, Europe of culture, you know, the integra integrational process based on, uh, on cultures, that it will already find understanding of culture, uh, will not be close uh, as European culture or any national culture, but European is also this, uh, has, has this uh, limitation, which will come to more open paradigm, which will give the room to feel at home or to say this is also our, the people from India, Africa, or Colombia. And if not, it, it will mean that there is still a problem where we face in, in, in Europe. And, and so it's like opening up from inside uh, to the others and, and creating this culture of solidarity, which will solutions and problems. Thank you so much, Crystal, for your, for your answer. And so if anyone would like to raise their digital hand now, you know, feel free to do so. Uh, Tiara is thanking you for your reply. If not, uh, do I hear somebody? Uh, feel free to speak out. Okay, maybe while we wait for people to uh, mobilize, so to say, I first want to apologize because as you said, you know, I, in my brain was so stuck to the term borderline instead of borderland. And it's, you know, although I knew what to say, but it's interesting, as you said, how the, our mind switches to the terminology that we're familiar with, you know, in, the, in this in a bad sense, you know, the borderlines mm -hmm. as something. So, you know, apologies for that. And I just wanted to say how, while you were talking, you know, I was thinking in this how, you know, you were, you wrote and you spoke a lot about heritage and honoring the heritage. Um, and, but, you know, what, what is tricky, so to say, is that heritage and thinking about origin are usually something that, you know, the traditional framework uses as something that is firm, you know, not flexible, something that is um, always existed. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, but at the same time, we want to honor that heritage and we want to honor that what happened in the past. And so to honor in the way that you spoke is about opening dialogue. And so the dialogue in that same traditional framework I uh, mentioned earlier is perceived as, you know, uh, floaty, uh, over compromising, something that's not solid, which is far from what's actually, you know, true and something you spoke about. And so I'm, you know, my question is how can we, dismiss this perceiving of tolerance and understanding and dialogue as being weak, which is definitely far from it. And so what would be the pedagogy to work with communities and people to transfer, as you said, I to we, you know, what would be the mechanism into creating this perception of, you know, co-working cooperation as being strong, not weak, in the traditional thinking societies, perhaps? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, um, it's a lot to say in response to you, Maria, but uh, shortly I would only underline this attitude of involving people into common work as co-workers, co-creators. Also, you, nobody can do these for them. Yeah? And, and nobody can do it taking them out or cutting, making them cut off, being cut off from the heritage uh, and so on, from the memories. Sometimes we tend to say, oh, forget about that. You know, don't deal with all these memories, past and so on, because it only creates boundaries and, and uh, problems, obstacles, but just go to the future. But my knowledge after working so many years with people is that it always stays with you. 
Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, also memories and, and heritage. So, uh, so again, the only way is to open it up from inside. Mm -hmm. and, and believe me that this will be not something new for them. The, this open format, this open pattern for culture, this is a deeply rooted thing in traditional culture. The modernity and the painful history close it up around national identities, for example, or religious or cultural uh, identities. That's how modernity developed on these sharp borders of who you are. And when I work, for example, to give you an example, in Indonesia, in Java, with the local community, which is Muslim, uh, but they live close to Borabadur, you know, Buddhist temple and some Hindu temples. From year, uh, since years, uh, they used to come to pray to these temples uh, because they were sacred for them. And, and they, they did understand this open format of culture and religion. You leave all the difference on the threshold, yes, and you come in. No, but the young generation, very often educated in Western Europe universities, when they came back, they started to talk to them, what, do you, are, what you are doing? You, know, you don't know who you are, you are Muslims. You, you should go to mosques. This is not yours, this Buddhist shrine. But, and for me, what, what was rebellious in that was that it came from Western Europe. So I would always consider Western Europe as an open liberal format, you know, for, for everything. But sometimes to see yourself from distance, you see how the modernity design as sharp borders for our identity. And so, so you can working in local community. You can refer to such things which are deeply, you know, at the bottom in 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 a deep memories or uh, cultures of, of local communities. You know, so to to rely on something what is hidden, what is in kind of taboo. You know, because there was no no tools, no culture, no language to speak it out. We invented, you know, the language of difference, of defending ourselves, not the language of bridging. I think it's very much uh, the culture of solidarity is about inventing new language, as well as cultural rituals, you know, practices, which make the solidarity events uh, uh, a part of cultural life. Yes, uh, when you invite to the dialogue, to sharing, to co-production, others, and, and make it a public community even, not limited, you know, to the margins, to the districts of this minority or another minority uh, of, of our community, but making it as a common community uh, holiday and, and ritual. So a lot of to do, to do it, it, it comes like inventing new forms of culture practices, new languages, but, but deeply it is, you know, like uh, reinventing, like, you know, taking it from the ground, you know, from something what was, you know, I was feeling like that, but I was ashamed to, uh, to talk about that, you know, especially Today, after this pandemic, like after the war, you know, you will, uh, you you will be full of you know, of these uh, languages and feelings to defend yourself, and and it towards the gesture of sharing openness, hospitality, uh, and so on, and without culture. You can't do it. That's why culture matters. Because without that, if you not create a space, tools, practices, it is abandoned. It is, you know, like an empty space, uh, which on the margins are inhabited by, you know, these heritage nationalistic, very often uh, narratives, you know, uh, uh, around uh, you as dominant. Yes, when the center is weak, when you don't have an agora in community for dialogues, for sharing, you have strong mahalas, you know, in the Balkans, you know, the strong districts, you know, with the nationalistic narratives and, and the excluding uh, others. 
only the way of, of overcoming it is not eliminating Mahamas, it's making our stronger. Uh, and, and, and a strong center, the small center of the world, makes the boundaries weaker outside of, uh, boundaries. Otherwise, when you start to annihilate, to you know, discredit themselves, you know, to, to cut them off, that not, not makes the agora stronger. It's just an excuse. It's just an escape. Agora is not an escape. Agora is is embracing the wholeness and taking responsibility for. Home. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate how you talked about, you know, language and base, and I mean base as humanness, you know, vulnerability being power, openness being strong. So thank you so much for that. I will, especially with the mahalas, I will marinate on this, you know, later on during the day. And so now I have a question from, and we're slowly coming, you know, towards the end of our Q&A from, sorry if I pronounce your name uh, wrong, uh, Vyata Utas, you will may perhaps know this better. Uh, it says, thank you for your amazing keynote speech, Christoph. For the conclusion, could you tell me more about ongoing or upcoming initiatives in Krasnogruda and what a current situation of politics of culture in Poland, in your opinion? Last but not least, what you think about a future, uh, what you think about a future protests of protests perhaps in Belarus? How ideas of Jerzy uh, Giedrozzi uh, would be rethinked? Thank you. Thank you without us uh, for these questions. Uh, many things to uh, have in response, but Jerzy Giedroć it is an, uh, it was an editor-in-chief of the magazine Kultura, published in Polish emigre circles uh, in Paris, near Paris. But uh, in fact, thank you for recalling him because he is in charge of replacing these ten crazy edges uh, uh, to the borderland, you know, to, to more uh, partnership with our eastern, mostly eastern neighbors uh, in Poland. And his ideas are still re uh, relevant, and, and I'm sure he was he would be very much concerned about what's going on today in Belarus. Um, his way of making Poland stronger was a way to help Belarus to be independent and strong. So this is very much aligns this philosophy of small centers of the world. It's you know this is not to monopolize the power, be stronger. Uh, from others, but to make them as strong as you are, and this is your power. You know the the the, the power of small center is uh, um, lays in uh, helping the others to be as strong as possible, as free uh, as um, as possible. So, uh, in you know, for our uh, for our interests, but uh, but also dreams, we should do all to help Belarus uh, in in that struggle and to feel that this is our struggle for mm -hmm. uh, for uh, culture of solidarity. Uh, how my dream, I would say, you know, in what is going on in, uh, in Krasnogruda, this is the place where we do have this international center for dialogue. My, my dream and our Portland team uh, dream is to create uh, something that I mentioned before, uh, like an academy. And, uh, but we, we do have it in short term, so we do, we do, we do have summer schools, seminars, symposia, you know, workshops all over the year during the year. But the dream would be to have it as a school that you can study, Maria, without us, you know, as the diploma of the bridge builder, that, that there is a craft which we can develop as a university curriculum and have it as, as a whole uh, academy or university, you can um, uh, you can study and and have diploma in, uh, in that. This is my dream. So to extending slowly from summer schools to longer term programs uh, for which we can invite people to study for two years or maybe four years 
this, which, uh, which is like a pedagogy and artistic capacities of, of the activists of culture for solidarity, of, of solidarity. That would be the dream, the challenge for us in the Great, thank you so much, Christoph. And Menno, do you want to say something or do you want me to? Uh, yes, I just, uh, I see it's almost one o'clock, uh, so I suppose we are ending uh, this uh, fantastic keynote speech. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Christoph, for that. I just wanted to make one more time the connection to the project Culture Lab Europe Spaces for Solid Solidarity by sharing my screen here and show you uh, how people are uh, responding to this uh, speech in our online uh, space. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Uh, it's very nice to see this is our roadmap and if I go here to the main square uh, mm -hmm. we can see one of the participants, Fran, who works for Reina Sofia Museum in Madrid, made this uh, visual representation of what you have been talking about and I liked it so much that I thought it's worth to share it with you. So you can see yourself back here in this live storytelling uh, graphic uh, picture. And I hope it represents uh, for you what you say. And I, I hope also that uh, the, we can continue to work in this uh, fantastic graphic way uh, on Nero. And that's the only thing I wanted to show. So Maria, I'm going to give back to you. Thank you so much, you know, Francisco. And thank you, Mena, for sharing this. Uh, thank you, Christoph, uh, for, you know, opening the lab, for giving such an insightful and really inspiring talk today. You know, all the best in continuing work. I can't wait to follow up uh, as you work forward. Uh, and to invite you and everyone, you know, uh, for tomorrow, we also have uh, a second Q&A uh, called Why We Need New European Media by Nathalie Nugarede hate me, I'm sorry, I'm trying to pronounce French as best as I can, but we're looking forward to hearing her from 11 to, as well as today till 1 p.m. Um, so, you know, join in with us tomorrow as well on our uh, live streaming. Also, I'd like to invite everybody who can on fr this Friday, 26th of June at 4.30 until 6.30 p.m. We're gonna have Central European time we're gonna have public presentations from uh, participants from the cultural lab and you know, Q and A's on initiative for solidarity in European public space. Uh, with this, uh, I wanna say again, thank you for everybody who's been a part of this lab, who will be a part of this lab. Thank you, Christoph, once again, Andre for also uh, opening up and Menno as well for working so hard on making this uh, forward. Have a lovely rest of the day and we continue with the lab at 3.30 with our participants. Thank you very much. And thank you, Francisco, for this lovely drawing. Bye, everybody. Bye.